Jesus gave us the command before Jesus left in Mark chapter 16 verses uh, 16, 17, 18. He talks about go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And these are the signs Jesus said will follow all those who believe. And um, I, when I got saved, I, I was just thinking, you know, it's all this for these great big uh, anointed uh, men of God. Uh, yes, they are for the anointed men of God. But I just thought that only limited few people on the finger of my uh, tip of my fingers, I can count those people, you know, uh, Dr. Reverend Benny Hain, uh, Brother Dinakaran, who prayed for me every time he used to write letters uh, to me. And, uh, you know, any problem was there, we used to just write to these kind of people and uh, wherever there was a healing crusade, we used to go and run and uh, kneel down and ask them to pray for us and all that. But people, uh, I don't know, nobody told me that we ourselves can do the things that are happening through these anointed men and the women of God. And uh, we... And I failed to realize that the same anointing that was on Dr. Reverend Dinakaran and Benny Hinn and uh, other people was also available to all the people, to you, to me, to the church, to the Christians, to the people who believed in the Lord Jesus. This power is and was always been there available. And uh, we did not know how to exercise those powers. And uh, I remember uh, Brother DGS Dinakaran, he used to have the, the school of uh, uh, empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And we used to long, uh, but you know, we had to sacrifice our time and then the monies and all that. I did not have at the age of 15, 16. My parents were thinking I was out of control, that I was uh, possessed. And uh, yes, I was possessed with Jesus. But they were thinking I was possessed with, you know, the evil one. And uh, uh, they were trying to put a lot of doubts and questions in my mind, like what happened to me? Yes, I was not like this. But as soon as Jesus came into my life, how did I become like this? Always thinking about Jesus, always wanting to pray, always wanting to worship, uh, always wanting to go to prayer meetings. Uh, it was a, <laughs> a very different experience that I had to go through. And I was always longing, longing to uh, know more about Jesus. Wherever there was uh, anything that had to do with uh, Jesus, anything that had to do with uh, God, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was the first person to be there. But unfortunately, I did not have money. And uh, my parents, I mean, they were uh, good enough. God blessed them and uh, they were uh, wonderful. But uh, they did not uh, encourage me because I was supposed to become an advocate, a lawyer like my father. And uh, I have wondered about these scriptures. What are these scriptures talking about? Uh, even in the chapter in Luke he, Jesus says, you know, don't leave unless you receive the power on high. Stay in Jerusalem. Jesus clearly tells his disciples, stay, don't go. I was wanting that power. What is that power? What did the disciples get? And uh, when I went to these churches, I used to go to very, very uh, orthodox churches. I used to then realize that what they were teaching was not uh, according to the Bible. And my mother was from a uh, you know, Catholic background. My father was from the Anglican background, Protestant background. And uh, I was going to these uh, different places uh, where people had different ways of worship. Everybody needs to wear white. And the woman cannot preach. The woman cannot pray. And uh, the, the, there's a church that there's no pastor. Anybody, everybody, whoever, you know, was uh, wanting to do anything, they can do anything. And uh, people who were talking with this, some strange language, I was wondering what that was. What on earth were they doing? I thought they were possessed and, uh, you know, they were trying to... Uh, manifest or something and uh, people did not give me I attended 
uh, many crusades. I remember uh, Dr. Joel Osteen was there in the uh, parade grounds and there were so many teams that had come from all over the world. Uh, did I say Joel Osteen? No, it was brother John Osteen, his Joel Osteen's father. And a uh, lot of people were coming and going in, uh, in and out of the country, but uh, I did not uh, believe that these signs and miracles and wonders would happen through a Christian, through a person who is saved. I did not realize that I had that power in me and I was seeking it somewhere else. It is like, you know, a lot of people, the ancestors, they die and uh, before they die, they have so much, so much of property, so much of bank balance and uh, uh, they hide it somewhere and they, they think, you know, let me tell, let me write a will, let me see how it's going to happen and suddenly they die. And then they, the, the uh, descendants, they don't know that so much of property, so much of inheritance has been kept for them. And uh, they act poor, they act, they don't have anything. And then finally one day they realize that, wow, they get a notice from the bank or they get a notice from whichever department saying that, you know, this much of uh, property is there, this much money is in the bank and all. Then they realize, wow, having so much of property, this happened to many people. Ha having so much of property, they were living like uh, paupers. So it's the same thing. We... Uh, having the power of God in us, we are trying to go somewhere else, trying to see where can I get this authority, where can I get this power. Only the people who are in these uh, limelights can only enjoy the power. That's what I was thinking. And uh, then I started realizing that uh, there is something different. And uh, you know, I started researching, I started studying the books, reading the books, even though I didn't have money. I used to borrow books. I used to borrow the cassette tapes. Those days were cassette tapes. I mean, you could hardly hear anything because it was dubbed and dubbed and dubbed so many times. The VCRs, the tapes, VHS tapes, and you could hardly see anything because it was dubbed like thousand times the copy and uh, you could hardly hear the sound and a uh, lot of things. You know, I was very thirsty for God. And then finally, I realized that I have the Holy Spirit. I have the power in me. And uh, one day, I said, Lord, if you are true, I want what brother uh, DGS Dinakaran has. I want what brother Benny Hinn has. So I closed myself in my room and I said, I need you, Lord. I fasted and I prayed. And it's not that, you know, because I fasted, I received it, but I was hungry. I did not know that uh, it was a free gift. I did not know that uh, the Lord uh, has already given it to me. And I just had to renew my mind and I need to just receive it. And I had to have this rivers of living waters, uh, the word, the power the manifest presence to be manifested through my life. I did not realize that. So I go into this room and I lock myself and I'm praying for so many days and uh, uh, the, the power of God hit me one day. I just said, no, God, I, I just need it. I, I need you. I need your blessing. And I just go and uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit filled, filled me with his power and my whole body was totally in a shock. I did not know what was happening. I did not know. Uh, there was not, nobody in the room. You know, people say, please pray for me, please pray for me. I said, God, if your word is true, if what you are saying, that if I have that power, what uh, Reverend Benny Hinn is talking about, what Brother DGS Dinakaran is talking about, if that is true, and if what all the men of God that I keep meeting and listening to, if they are saying that the power is in me, and your word is saying the power is in me, then Lord, let that power manifest. Show me, I need to know. And that day, one fine afternoon at about 
between two to three o'clock, I was uh, encountered by the Holy Spirit and the power of God just touched me and I started talking in this language that I did not know. And uh, I was so excited and uh, it, it was just, I mean, my whole body was dry and I was uh, uh, cold and uh, it, even though it was, it was summer. I was cold and I, uh, it was a totally different thing that uh, had happened to me. I cannot explain how and uh, of the experience because you, a person has to experience, then only you'll understand. And from that day onwards, the power of God started flowing in me. I realized what a wonderful, wonderful experience I had. I said, wow, did I really receive the Holy Spirit? Did, uh, did, did the Holy Spirit, uh, did it already exist in me? Even though I knew, I mean, I received the Lord Jesus. I know we have been seeing about the scriptures. The Holy Spirit lives in us. He does not go. From the time we receive Jesus, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in us. I was uh, so happy. Uh, the confirmation from God and uh, uh, God talking about, yes, I am with you and I'm going to use you. The visions that God gave me, the dreams that God gave me, I, I did not know how all those would happen because I was thinking, my father does not encourage me, my people don't encourage me, my friends, you know, those days which were all very, very dry. And uh, it was a tough challenge for me to be a Christian. I was attacked. Uh, I was threatened to be killed. Uh, you know, when, when I carried the gospel, people came with knives. I literally ran away. People, demon-possessed people. Uh, it was, there are a lot of stories I can keep telling in the future, but my life was under threat after knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, after knowing the power of the gospel, after the Holy Spirit uh, taking control of me, giving me the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that power that came upon me. People did not understand. People thought I was uh, self-righteous. People thought I was acting like uh, this crazy wacko and uh, trying to pretend, trying to be holy and all that. No, it was uh, a thirsty, a longing, a desire, an honest uh, longing for the truth there was a vacuum in my bar in my in my heart in my spirit i was searching for that people have prophesied and which i knew that the lord has given me those visions and all dreams so i said lord i want to do i don't know how it's going to be when you have parted the red sea when i read the bible the red sea was parted i believed it as it is in the word it parted and people walked and the enemy were drowned. The Jericho walls collapsed and only the prostitute Rahab who helped, who was a wicked person, prostitution, the Lord does not uh, encourage. In the Old Testament, it was supposed to be stoned to death. And this prostitute, the Lord saved her life and uh, protected her. All these stories, I said, what a compassionate, merciful God he is. And the Lord used different kinds of people, the, the stuttering, stammering people. Moses was, you know, he said, no, 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 Lord, I cannot. And uh, I cannot be <laughs> used because I can't speak. I can't go to Pharaoh. But if you see in the book of Hebrews, we have to compare the word of God, even though in, in, the, in the first five books of uh, the Bible, Genesis talks about uh, Moses could not uh, talk, he needed help and Aaron was given. But Hebrews talks about, you know, he was trained. He was this number two guy in Egypt. He had all kinds of education. He had the power. He had wonderful things uh, in Egypt. And uh, here he comes. I'm, I'm sure he might have uh, started uh, stuttering because uh, he went away from the plan of God after killing that Egyptian. He was gone from the Lord's presence and he ran away into the uh, hill country and uh, trying to take care of uh, uh, the father-in-law, the sheep, you know, bah, bah, and then there was nothing else to do for him, you know, hours together just taking care of sheep and maybe his tongue might have got stuck or whatever you know when you run away from the plan of god when you run away from the power of god uh, things don't go 
as you want to, as you desire. You need to follow and be in the will of God. Don't take things in your hands. Moses took things in his hands. Even though God prepared him to deliver the people because of the mistake of Moses, even though the prophecy was that 400 years they will be in slavery, after 400 years they will be delivered, because of what Moses did, he took things in his own hands. He did not wait for God. When God speaks, when God does, everything falls in its place. You will not understand how it will happen. It will all fall in its place. You don't have push. You don't have to put pressure. You don't have to do things that uh, God does not need your help to make his will. He will use you to perform his will. So Moses took it and then it was almost like a uh, couple decades, uh, people were uh, still late getting out of slavery because of the mistake Moses had done. So it was, it was a thirst in my life. It was a hunger in my life. How, Lord, I want to uh, experience, you know, the demon uh, casting away, the healing, the sick. And uh, Matthew chapter 10 verse uh, 8, uh, talking about... Uh, sick healed and then uh, dead rise uh, lepers cleansed demons cast away i wanted that and one eight of acts you will receive power i said lord i want that power i want to transform the lives of people and uh, that day when i sat down when i went into my room it was a habit for me. My room was this holy of holies. Nobody, I never allowed anybody to come into my room. You know, in my dad's house, we had a, a, a three bedroom uh, house, independent house, and a, a very beautiful house um, my dad built. And uh, we had everything. I mean, we were the first people to have color TV those days, you know, Bell Tech. It was an imported uh, TV, Bell Tech, and we were the first people to have uh, the refrigerators. These are the days I'm talking about. Phones, you had to wait, <laughs> wait for, uh, uh, you know, 10, 15 years for phones to be connected. So the Lord has uh, helped me, prepared me. So this room was the holy of holies. So I went into this room every day, morning, night, afternoon. I go into the room, lock myself like Jesus talks in the Beatitudes in the chapter 5, 6, 7. You know, when you pray, go and lock and see that uh, nobody knows what you're praying except your heavenly father. I literally did all those things, hours together, hours together with the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, with the power, with the peace of God, closing down the uh, windows and uh, even the small tiny hole, you know, when we were small, we used to be very naughty, naughty boys and, and our brothers and sisters used to see from them, you know, what is this guy doing, you know. So I used to put a curtain on my window so that uh, nobody, not even a mosquito can hear me praying to God. So that was the hunger and thirst that I was having for the Lord. And uh, today the Lord has blessed me. He has made me at this stage. You know, people have uh, always seen from where to where I have come. The Lord's hand was upon me. That day I re realized that I was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because I prayed. I said, Lord, today I'm not wanting to leave this room. I need your power. I need your presence. I closed down and then I started praying and the power, the baptism, the fire, the fire of God hit me and uh, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The power on high came upon me. And then from that day onwards, my life never was the same. My life got transformed, my life got changed and people were seeing that there is something different in my life. That was the peace of God, that was the power of God. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's what happened to me. The second encounter that every Christian should have. This is not, uh, you know, some rule. It is the command of Jesus. The disciples knew Jesus. The disciples waited for the power to come on high upon them. So brothers and sisters, today I ask you, you need that power. 
power from on high to come upon you. Unless that power comes upon you, you will not be successful. You will be miserable. You will be hating life. You would say, what is this? Why is my life like this? I want to pray for you. The same God who empowered me by his power is present in you if you know Jesus as your personal savior. He will empower you. He will touch you. He will transform your life if you genuinely seek. Yes, I would like to pray for you. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father, as you have touched me because I desired to have your touch. Today I pray thousands of them, Lord, that are listening and watching this broadcast. I pray in Jesus' name that your power, your baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power on high, come upon them in the name, in the blood of Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. The Lord has blessed you. If you need to know more about how you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how you can be saved, how you can be uh, receiving the power from on high, call me, email me, go on our website, go on our Facebook uh, and uh, keep in touch with us or come and meet me in the church. We have church every Sunday at 10 o'clock. We start prayer at 9.30, 10 o'clock, bang, dot, sharp. The church starts. It's a bilingual church. Um, you can come to Jesus Way Prayer House, NTPC Road, Annoji Guda, Gatkesar Mandal. Look forward to seeing you. God bless you. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Amen.